I thought I'd share and explain an interesting quirk with my mousepad setup that I've never talked about before. As you can see, I have another mousepad sitting under the pad I'm currently using. And there's a very specific reason for doing this. It's not quite as simple as it looks, so let me explain what's going on here. The end result is a more grounded feeling mouse grip and glide that doesn't feel as floaty or shaky as it may with a standard mousepad setup. And look, this isn't some make or break cosmic aiming technique, yet it is another optimization that can help contribute to reaching your potential. The problem we are solving here is with the gap under our wrist when our arm is laying flat on the table. You may not have a clear gap and that's not important, the same still applies. When aiming, you probably won't have your whole forearm on the desk, but the problem still persists. The larger size of your forearm toward the elbow means this section hits the desk first and takes most of the weight of your arm, while also propping up your wrist and hand. If I were to draw a line from here to my hand, you can see there's quite a gap. Now it's not that major in practice because it squishes down, but there's still a difference. There are outliers of course who use a floating wrist, but for the most amount of people aiming with the base of your palm in contact with the mouse pad provides much better control and accuracy. And that's what's being compromised by this height difference. If I were to aim on a single flat plane like this desk mat, I experience a subtle sensation of needing to reach my hand down to meet the mouse pad. This makes the mouse grip feel a little less secure and my glide feels more floaty and shaky. This wouldn't suddenly make me a terrible aimer by any means, but if I can easily correct it and improve my aim even just a little, I may as well. So, the goal here is to prop up the surface under your hand, but not the upper forearm, and to distribute the weight of your arm a bit more evenly into the desk. We can do this by keeping our upper forearm at the same original height, and then adding some height under the first section of our forearm and hand and any surface we'd be moving our mouse on. Adding substance under this smaller section helps to fill it out and make the mouse pad surface meet the hand more easily. A good way to quickly test exactly what variables we're shifting around here is to take a book or something similar, not too thick though, and place it at the edge of your setup so the end of your forearm and hand are free. Try moving the mouse around as if you were aiming, you'll likely notice that sensation of having to reach downwards, the grip feeling less secure and the glide feeling more floaty. This is obviously an extreme example, but it helps to show what's going on in a standard setup just to a lesser degree. Depending on the thickness of your mouse pad, by simply placing it further up your desk, you can create a beneficial height difference with minimal effort. I personally have found that a little more height than my Aqua Control Zero works best for me. So I also have an old Logitech G640 sitting underneath to get the right height. And as you can see, my wrist gap has disappeared. These stacked mouse pads help the surface reach up to my hand without me having to reach down instead. As a result, my hand feels steadier and more grounded, which I personally find very useful for tracking in particular. Stacking mouse pads is a simple option, but not the only way, of course. All sorts of materials could be used, particularly if you needed a sturdier surface to place a hard pad on. Give this setup a try and see how well it works for you. You can check out the Clawmate mouse mod I designed over at StruthGamingGear.com, video all about how it works right here. Thanks so much for watching, be sure to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll catch you in the next one.